the narcissist and cleanliness. Some narcissists are not hygienic at all. Unclean, dirty, smelly. House a mess, workplace a disgrace. Desk can't even see it under the mountain of crap. Typically, the narcissist that is unhygienic and untidy will belong to the victim cadre, a generally useless individual that will expect other people to do the tidying for them. And if there isn't anybody to do that, then they live in squalor. Of course, not all victim cadre narcissists will behave this way if they have different traits of the cadre, being untidy and unhygienic are just two of the traits. You might have a victim cadre narcissist who is clean and lives in a tidy home. But if you are to find one which is an individual who is dirty, unkept, unclean, they are likely to be of the victim cadre unless there is a different cadre which is even stronger than those victim traits. Lower lessers are often found to be unclean and hygienic, even if they are not victim cadre. So, for instance, a lower lesser somatic may well enjoy going out and eating out when he can afford to do so, enjoys having technology, thinks that he's good-looking, but isn't, and is unkept, dishevelled, perhaps wearing stained clothing. Where he lives, it might be a low-rented apartment, or he is the trailer trash. He need not necessarily be of the victim cadre because he could be somatic because of his interest in money, his interest in sex, his interest in particular somatic hobbies. And therefore, he belongs to the somatic rather than the victim cadre. But, being a lower lesser, the unhygienic aspects manifest through that. Middle lessers, similarly, could be found to be the unhygienic type of narcissist. Maybe even some bullying upper lesser type bees. Far less likely to find it with the upper lesser type A, the more charismatic, whirlwind partying, um, shagomatic upper lesser type A, usually will have to rely upon being hygienic and cleanly to ensure that they secure their victims through that particular modus operandi. Some lower mid range narcissists may also be uh, lacking in hygiene since they are an amalgam of the lesser and the mid-range narcissist. What is often seen with regard to mid-range narcissists is a difference between what is presented to the outside world and their own home environment. This is, of course, because of the operation of the facade. And the individual may be one that slobs around in his sloppy joes at home, not bothering to shave at the weekend, dishevelled and unkept, not bothering to shower, yet when it comes to getting ready to go to work or a night out, or just generally seeing other people, they're well-groomed, clean and maintained. That kicks into place for the purposes of the facade. It might be that the home environment is chaotic in terms of hygiene and tidiness, that even though an intimate partner primary source might be doing their best to keep on top of it, this particular mid-range narcissist is likely to be lower mid-range. It's so untidy that they are fighting against an avalanche of debris, refuse, etc. The type of individual who might, for example, have the ever-present car on the driveway that's hitched up on a jack, waiting repair that never actually gets done or the boat that's permanently parked, annoying the neighbours, waiting for that coat of paint. An eyesore that's clogging up the driveway, 
the garden that is overrun. So the issue of cleanliness bleeds also into the issue of tidiness as well, hygiene and tidiness. And certain mid-range narcissists, though of course not all, will operate that facade when it comes to the issue of tidiness and cleanliness. Away from those who form the facade, they slouch around in a tracksuit, eating cheesy watsits, letting it all hang out. But as soon as it comes to the implementation of the facade and seeing other people, then they're suddenly magically groomed. If people come round, there may suddenly be a whirlwind marathon of tidying up and cleaning, or more likely, urging the long-suffering intimate partner primary source to undertake that. So with regard to certain narcissists, there are some which are habitually and perpetually unclean, unkept and untidy. Often found at the victim cadre, but not always, and more, and can be found within lower, lesser, middle, lesser, upper, lesser type B, lower, mid-range. Then there are those which operate the facade, so externally, well presented, clean and groomed, so possibly lower mid-range, middle mid-range A and B, even possibly upper mid-range, but behind closed doors, either far less well-groomed, although not necessarily dirty and smelly, or even going so far as to be unhygienic when there's nobody around to see. Then there are the narcissists which are fastidious about cleanliness, tidiness and hygiene. I am one of those. That type of narcissist can be found, theoretically, in every single school. So you could actually have a middle lesser somatic who is exceptionally house-proud, always very well turned out, because their somaticism operates through that. They're middle lesser by virtue of the fact that they're physically violent, not particularly clever, don't have a job or are in and out of work. They operate with low charm and have a low threshold on their ignited fury, amongst other factors. So the possibility of a narcissist being fastidious about cleanliness, tidiness and hygiene is one which could be seen within any subschool, but it's more usually found with middle, middle range A and B, upper mid range, the greaters and the ultra. There will be amongst those subschools general tidiness, being decently groomed and clean, all part of the presentation to the outside world alongside the intimate partner primary source and intimate partner secondary sources done in order to attract individuals and keep them attracted. The appearance of the narcissistic traits of pride and vanity and showcasing, showing off the beautiful house that's immaculately presented, clean and so forth. But when it moves into the realms of fastidious, whereby every surface is kept clear, is scrubbed, disinfectant used readily, bleach poured down the drains, the garden looks like a team of fairies have trimmed the lawn overnight with tiny little scissors. Everything is manicured, well presented, nothing is out of place. It is as if the clouds are moved away from being over the house. The house is always well maintained, extremely tidy inside, extremely clean, all surfaces scrubbed down, carpets and rugs vacuumed, floors cleaned and polished, surfaces are kept clear of clutter, everything is in its place. It looks like a show home. And then the narcissist, always immaculately presented, even when casually dressed. And then, when dealing with other people, done up to the nines, perfumed, fragranced, hair beautifully coiffured, trimmed, nails trimmed neat and clean, skin radiant, scrubbed, moisturised, nourished, clothing always ironed, always pressed, Teeth clean, 
and well maintained. No coffee stains, no missing teeth. Eyes clear. The narcissist ensures that the desk is always one that complies with the clear desk theory. You'll be hard pressed to find dust anywhere. Pens are neatly arranged. Bookcases. Nothing is lopsided or heaped on top of one another. Wires are either not present, because the narcissist ensured as much as possible is wireless, or where they are, they are kept hidden behind furniture, kept within tubes, so they can't be seen. Pictures dusted, always framed, never lopsided. Everything is correct, ordered, clean, polished. This is done in order to control. The issue of hygiene and cleanliness or lack of cleanliness, tidiness or lack of tidiness, is ultimately a device utilised by the narcissist, typically enough, to control. Let us take the narcissist that is untidy or unhygienic. First of all, there's an absence of accountability to themselves. They see no reason why they have to maintain a regime of grooming and getting their hair cut and trimming that beard or being clean-shaven, of removing makeup rather than leaving yesterday's plastered on overnight. There's a sense of entitlement to look how they want to look. There's no boundary recognition, so their mess spills into the areas of everybody else. And there's a lack of emotional empathy. They don't care about how they look, and they don't care about the mess that they create, because they don't care about the impact it has upon other people. And of course, this lack of being presentable, this disgusting, dirty, unclean individual that creates a mess, utilises this for the purposes of assertion of control over other appliances by way of triangulation. Therefore, if an individual complains, the narcissist can utilise that as a means to lash out at them. You clean it up. I'm not bothered. There's not really much of a problem here. If you have to be such a clean freak, you get on with it. Of course, out of the sense of entitlement, there is the expectation that other people clean up after them anyway. That's not my job, it's your job. I've been at work, you should, have, you should deal with all of this. So what if I'm stripping a motorcycle in the living room? It's my hobby, I can do what I want. I pay the mortgage on this house, stop complaining. But then, of course, that individual has to deal with the oil that has been trodden to the carpet thereafter. So the absence of tidiness and hygiene with this particular type of narcissist is born out of an, a lack of a sense of accountability, a sense of entitlement, poor boundary recognition, and a lack of a sense of uh, a lack of emotional empathy. And it is utilised to triangulate the individual with the mess. It can also be utilised, of course, for the purposes of pity plays. I haven't got time to do all of this. Oh, I don't know how to do my hair. Will you help me? Can you trim my nails for me? Can you scrub me down? Could you iron my shirt? when they appear dishevelled and unkept. And therefore, the pity play, often seen with lower, mid-range or middle lesser, would be utilised in that regard. What then about our ultra-hygienic narcissist? This, of course, is also born out of control. First of all, by having an immaculate house, immaculate workplace, immaculate car that's always valeted, and, of course, looking pristine, this attracts individuals to this particular type of narcissist. Generally speaking, they will be of the somatic and elite cadre. It could occur with cerebral, but they're less concerned with um, appearance. And you are unlikely, although it's not impossible, but you're unlikely to see such fastidious approach adopted by those of the victim cadre. It's usually, but not all, somatic and elite narcissists that will present in this fashion. This is done to attract people to the narcissist, to make them easier to control and to gain character traits, residual benefits, and of course, fuel from. The presentation 
of such an environment, of course, is also used to control by triangulation. Take your shoes off. Don't mess up the house, which could be issued to the intimate partner primary source, to non-intimate secondary source children, siblings, visitors. Keeping the house like a show house, every surface clean and uncluttered, no dirt, no mess, no smudges, no smears, enables the narcissist to assert control over those individuals by ensuring that they keep everything ordered and clean. For those of you who've seen the film American Psycho, you may remember one scene where Patrick Bateman invites his secretary, Jean, to come round, and they are in his apartment, and he offers her uh, a sorbet. And she's eating it, and she goes to put the spoon down on the coffee table, and he halts her, because he doesn't want the mess appearing on the coffee table. That fastidious approach to ensuring that there is no mess allows the assertion of control and is part of the need to not only control people, but our environments. With some narcissists, our control of people bleeds into having that pristine environment. Everything must be just so. We control people, we then control things also. And of course, we see people as appliances. So it makes perfect sense that with particular narcissists that there is an extension of that control over the people appliances, if I can call them as such, into actual inanimate object appliances. It also goes to effectiveness. Upper echelon narcissists are hugely effective. And by having a clear and uncluttered desk, one works more effectively. Where everything is put in the right place, one can find a pair of scissors immediately, or the right screwdriver. I ensure in my own homes, which are cleaned once a week, and additionally if I'm hosting anybody, in terms of a dinner party, etc., that they are beautifully clean and well presented. I want it that way because it not only accords with my sense of pride about my environment, vanity and showcasing, but enables me to control people within those environments. I despise clutter. I need to know where everything is, and so that I can obtain it at a moment's notice. There is no time for delay. Delay can prevent, or rather delay can occasion, a loss of control, and therefore that must be avoided. You might wonder, do I find it exhausting or tiresome being so ordered, so clean? Not at all. It comes naturally to me. As I say, with regard to my properties, I have cleaners that come and attend to those, and I'm naturally tidy on top of that. So as one is being tidy, it doesn't take much to tidy things away. And of course, the intimate partner primary source must always fit in with this environment. If she does not, then she will find out to her cost that she needs to do so. With regard to my own grooming, I am fastidiously clean. I clean my hands several times a day, particularly when in environments where I'm meeting other people, which of course ensures that I remain in excellent health, as there is no transmission of germs to me. The maintenance of excellent health is hugely important to me because losing time through being ill affects control, and therefore one thinks ahead to ensure that that does not occur. I always smell fantastic with the utilisation of expensive and exquisite fragrances. I have my hair cut roughly every 12 days, and unless professional demands require it, I will be clean-shaven. There are, of course, instances in the field where appearances alter, but away from that, I will always maintain a fastidious grooming regime. I shower at least twice a day, once, follow, once upon rising, and then after following exercise. It's important to me to be clean, to look good, and to smell good. That enables me to assert control over other people, and it is about having pride in oneself and one's appearance. Cleanliness is important, but whether the narcissist is dismissive about it, adopts a laissez-faire attitude, or whether the narcissist is 
focused upon tidiness and cleanliness and is fastidious about it, it is utilized, as ever, for the purpose and achievement of the prime aims. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.